Hello. It's me, George Lees, and I'm very confused now. Like, really, really, really confused. Listen to this. Yeah, and see if I come to my senses before the end of the uh, music that you're about to hear. So, I, I might be on the verge of committing suicide, because this story is way too complicated for me. <laughs> yeah, let's have a wee look at <laughs> the author for Ivanhoe. He could have, he could be one of dozens and dozens of people, all of them trading under the name Walter Scott, or the Duke of Buccleuch, or <laughs> the... Uh, Montagues, or the Scots, or all oh, the Dukes of Haddington, Dalkeith, all oh, over the country, and all oh, the way down into Northamptonshire, where Princess Diana was a heroine, and that story about Walter Scott, r that Walter Scott wrote about Ivanhoe, is just stolen. It's the Robin Hood story. <laughs> yeah, and all the stories are likely to come from the same root, like the Bible stories, and in that movie, it's James Bond, yeah, the boring old one, Roger somebody, Roger Moore. Okay, <laughs> have a look at this. Just astounding. This is the family tree, and this is the probably the black Douglases and the red Douglases that I was ranting on about the other day, yeah, because this is the Montague Douglas lineage. <laughs> Uh, and it is also the Baclou lineage. Let's just scan to the right. <laughs> Scottish Scots, Douglas and Scots. You see the Walter Scott connection, the Black Douglases, the Montagues, uh, and here we've got the the Douglas lineage. Yeah, and what I'm going to tell you about now is the linkage of this lot, like really lots of them, to the other people that I've been talking about in the Muracks and in the more recent things that I'm going to expose in today's video which is in this set of tabs okay <laughs> it's incredibly complicated even for a professor in neuroscience okay and I've only had one can of beer that's just to calm me down okay <laughs> and the religion is all through it okay this is a statement late on in one of the tabs I'm going to show you about a town called Langham, which is where Rab C. Nisbet was born. <laughs> yeah, and there's an Episcopal chapel there that is the private chapel belonging to His Grace the Duke of Buccleuch and is situated in the grounds of Langham Lodge. I cannot find that in Google Maps. There are masses and masses of stately homes all over the country and they've got Cornish estates too. <laughs> yeah, and one has no idea how you tell them apart or how you find them as Google images as individuals. Yeah, please take a look at the last two videos I made on the missing links between the Rothschilds, the Montefiores, and the Helen Hirsch name from the uh, Schindler's List. Uh, yeah, so, and what we've got here is declarations that the Episcopal, yeah, the Piso sponsored <laughs> fraud that is Jesus Christ 
they've got private fucking chapels and if you go to the Merton estate which I did loads of times because my dad was on the fishing syndicate before they booted him out <laughs> from further up the food chain yeah you find that there is a private chapel same at the mouth of the river Tevia that runs through Moor Battle and that is on the walls of those private chapels can you guess what they've got hanging there? Yet yeah, they've got a neck brace for women who get pregnant out of wedlock in the downstairs sector because they're privately owned by His Grace the Duke of Buccleuch all over the country from Cornhill to Doorknocker sorry Doorknock <laughs> yeah yeah and even further north than that all of it the whole of our land is owned by the plagiarists who copied <laughs> the uh, the Robin Hood story and made it the Ivanhoe story and the music is crap and the story is crap and the whole thing is just a theft project against the people and to steal their minds and their souls <laughs> right then so let me try and give some order to this little chat that I'm having with you and let me take you through the tabs one at a time ok my dad's name is George my name is George but my dad's got initials in the middle <laughs> And that could make him part of the aristocracy, for all I know. <laughs> okay, and what you've got is, my dad told me yesterday a little bit about the Mowbrays, and remember that the Mowbrays and the Mowbrays are linked in since Longshanks to the Dukes of Norfolk, and there's the Mowbray. Do you see? links to the Murray story and to the chief marshal and the mountain to a mole hill yet yeah, the Mars Hill jokes yet yeah, all of it is from the same route you can see the donkey braying is brought into this one and you can see that this is because Colin Cowdery is in Longshanks' family this is the England cricket jersey it is the England football jersey and there's the three Christian fucking crosses on Calvary Hill with the bales on top of them <laughs> yeah that's not the straw man joke it's the uh, Christian cross joke yeah and the Wiccans and the Wiccans are the uh, people who are the pagans who get killed by the Christian warlords as we move through the story ok so dad G George Hugh Ainsley Lees reminded me that the Mowbrays of Broomlands were big landowners yeah that's because the interlink to Longshanks in the family tree that I've shown you with Cowdery and David Frost on it ok you can see the links to the cricket you can see the links to the football you can see the links to the Lion of Judah but the links to Longshanks are really sinister because that is the Plantagenet lineage and everywhere I've been in this world they have the broom icons yeah the broom is the icon for the Plantagenet it's Rothschild yellow it grows on every mountainside in Scotland and in New Zealand now because they planted it there and in what I was trying to find on my website which is the burial of John F. Kennedy they have the broom burning beside his coffin yeah and it becomes the bedroom tax <laughs> okay and it becomes all of the jokes that we're going to show you all the way down through this story so before we get too deeply into each of the tabs let me briefly profile all of the tabs for you so the next one is Montbray because Geoffrey de Montbray comes from Montbray yeah and that is in the 1066 yeah and so let me quickly show you Geoffrey de Montbray he came in the conquest of England by Guillaume William of Norway Normandy 
at the conquest of England in 1066. For his support, he was granted some 280 English manors, each about the size of a village. <laughs> okay, so the Canadians are doing okay in this day and age, but in the transition of Christianity across Europe, uh, <laughs> the frogs, yeah, and the Berties, and all of the stories that we've told you already about the Carolingians and the Moravingians, which are the Murrays, yeah, and the Murrays continue into this little story, yeah. That's the Mowbrays, yeah, and they are the massive owners of this house that my dad reminded me of. Yeah, it's Broomlands. That's the Plantagenet Longshanks joke, and it's the John F. Kennedy burial joke. They were huge landowners in Kelso, and on their estate they hosted the scout and guide Jamborees. That's the paramilitary training that I've told you about. The Brownies are the joke about the goblins on the church roof. Gordon Brown is an example of how they plant them in as political puppets. But the the uh, brownie is the joke about Noddy and Big Ears. Yeah, Big Ears is the brownie. He's the elfin character, and that becomes the Elf Oil Company and Justin Welby's employers before he became the Archbishop of Canterbury. <laughs> okay, so see the Dukes of Norfolk family trees. The Braveheart carrier character called Murray may be the same lineage as the Geordie Dukes of Northumberland. Let's go down a bit and we can take you through the tabs. The Langham tab is particularly important for me because it is really vicious. Everything is run by those Buclues way out there in the wilderness all over the moorlands and the mountains of Scotland, England, Ireland and Wales. <laughs> so, Mont Bray. <laughs> yeah, it's in France. Look at the piles. <laughs> yeah, it, they are massive. Absolutely massive. Geoffrey de Mont Bray. Yeah? And this is the Mowbrays in Britain. This is Longshanks' friends for several generations in his family trees and right in the middle of Kelso where the primary schools now are and the rugby pitches now are and the housing schemes because all of them are busted for cash because we're on the <laughs> 150th tier of the sovereign debt crisis. It's just amazing how greedy they are, all of them and all of those Duke of Buclue owned mansions, I've visited some of them, yeah, they are so big, they have no people from the family living in them anymore, they're just tourist exhibits, <laughs> okay, and you do not get in for free to any of them. <laughs> so, uh, Geoffrey's Great Church, shall we go a wee bit further down and show you something, a little bit more, so there's where it is. This is the Mont Bray. So it's an upland looking down from the headlands of Nor Normandy. And it's right next door to the place where they have a drink which is very, which I like very much because I understand that it is called the True de la le, True de Normande. And it's called Calvados. So right next to that red tab there, yeah, and right opposite Guernsey and Jersey, there, <laughs> yeah, those two little dots, they're the Channel Islands, yeah, in British hands, jointly in British-German hands, throughout the war, and can you guess what they do there then and now? <laughs> yeah, that's right, the Londa, and that's where Born Leisure have <laughs> one at some of the registered interests that's Butlins of Hertfordshire right next door to the Rothschilds okay so this is where uh, <laughs> the Mowbrays or the Montbrays came from in France a Norman nobleman okay <laughs> let's just go through that one what is we, what are we seeing so there's another abbey at Con 
uh, and Molger's brother was was Molger and see the Mowbray consecrated at Ruin. Yeah, that's the road to Ruin joke. And we've told you about the bombing of those towns in the Normandy region. Yeah, and all of the double agents that did all of the killing and the French, uh, the free French movement that was trying to act actually confront the Germans, they were massacred in huge numbers because all of the real free French profiteers are by that stage in Hertfordshire and Buckingham. <laughs> yeah, okay, so I think we've done it enough on that. Uh, and let's just take you through. So I'm quite stunned by how influential the Benis Benedictine monasteries were when they came to Scotland because they're run by warlords, they're not run by religious people. Okay, the bishop who contended the conqueror's funeral attended the conqueror's funeral joined in the rising against William Rufus in 1088, making Bristol, which has as doomsday shows, he, w with which he was closely connected and where he had built a strong castle. Yeah, that's all of the Bristol boil rooms, everything that goes on. So we've been to the Channel Islands, same people take us into Bristol and the West Country, and there's the Worcester links, that is uh, Tom of Warwick, and the abbot of Ely, and he likely acted as a doomsday commissioner, and was placed about the same time in charge of Northumberland. Yeah. So what it, these little statements are saying is that these people were not religious clerics. Uh, but this is quite sick, because this is Montacute Castle. Can you see the links to the Montague there? In September 1069, in 1075, he again took the field. Yet this is Bishop Odo, French Bishop Odo. Take the bishop, bishop out and you get Frodo, the hero in the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah, everything is a joke for them. Okay, uh, and so let's have a look at the Kelso Abbey, which was run by the Benedictines and was used it, it was gifted huge tracts of land and I'm going to explain that to you now <laughs> okay it's the Mowbrays again so this is a, a genealogy site Mowbray surname meaning and statistics surname in the world so it's the 47 and 4,073rd no <laughs> it, the, it's the most it's about the 500,000th most common surname in the world <laughs> Yeah, I get dyslexic with numbers so approximately 1,518 people bear this surname globally so it's not really all that common because these are the world owners <laughs> Yeah, and you can see how often they use the words Walter Scott, Buclue, yeah <laughs> Montague and all of the other things, Haddington, yeah, the uh, the people that are involved in the boxing rules, all of them are names that are affiliated to the same family groups. Tiny number of people bearing the name. Okay, these are really, really super elites, and it's actually Montbury, yeah, the French location, yeah, not Moubry, yeah, but as you know, all of them, they just change a letter now and again and it becomes a series of sequential jokes. Okay, a surname of the Norman origin from the ancient barody, barony of Mombry in Calvados. So that's what's in Wikipedia as Montbury and you've seen the location of it and that's right next door to the Calvados place where they make the liqueur that burns all of the way down through your throat. <laughs> okay, uh, the first of the name in Scotland was probably Robert de Moubry, who witnessed the gift of Staple Gorton to Kelso Abbey. Never heard of Kel Staple Gorton in Kelso before, and I'll explain that to you in a few minutes because it's nowhere fucking near Kelso, it's right across on the west coast of the borderland, and all of that 
belongs then to Kelso Abbey, right the way across almost into Carlisle and Lockerbie. Yeah, and all of the crime scenes on the other side are part of the crime scenes in the crashing of planes and helicopters, and I'm going to explain that to you later on. So they were gifted Staplegorton at Kelso. Staplegorton is actually Langham, and it's still the Duke of Buccleuch's land. <laughs> okay, search for Mowbray families in the census, search for Mowbrays in church records, search for Mowbrays in newspapers, search for Mowbrays in immigrants. That's a scandal at the moment. Have you noticed that? That they're noticing that people are fleeing from nations, and we're bringing thousands of them into Britain at Britain's expense, in inverted commas. Yeah, my neighbour tried to give me a lecture on how frail the economy is and how useful the Queen is for raising money for our country. <laughs> Beryl, you're a bimbo. If you're listening to this with the rest of the Episcopalian audience, you need to learn a little bit quicker than that. Then we can have our country back. <laughs> but that's the Episcopalian church that is cited as being the private place of worship of the Duke of Buccleuch and the Duchess of Merton with the neck brace hanging round the outside of the church just to show that women that get abused out of wedlock by the aristocracy that own the church yeah, have to account for their sins and then they have to go to the colonies because they're impoverished by the Duchess and the Duke <laughs> okay a surname of Norman origin from the ancient barony of Mombrey in Calvados and it's, this is the bit about the gift Philip de Morney Mubri, who sat in Curia Regis 1208 was probably his son Philip de Mubraj and that becomes a sinister link to India <laughs> yeah, and the empire upon which and here's another sinister link we mentioned the bimbos in the uh, Arundel Norfolk sector and in the Carlisle sector for the Bolfers. It's the Boltons. Yeah, that's the Boltons that are the banking magnets and are laughed at in the uh, the musical about Mary Poppins. Yeah, the bankers with the bowler hats. <laughs> okay. And about the same date, witness characters by William the Lion, Ibid 30, 39, 44, Kelso 412. Okay, so we're getting well into the AD years now, and religion is beginning to crawl like the life of Brian the Snail all across Europe. <laughs> yeah, if you don't remember Brian the Snail, it was on the telly in BBC Light Entertainment before every six o'clock news bulletin that might have been read by the man called John Stapleton comes into the story further down the page again okay so there's a whole chapter and here we've got Surnames of Scotland by George Fraser Black and I could go on and on and on but I just want to make sure that I get through the main themes okay <laughs> the Langham bit is particularly close to me that church and that bridge we used to cross it every time I took my family up for our holidays in Scotland, in the north of Scotland, yeah, in the southeast of Scotland, all over Scotland. On one occasion we went to the Palnuir Burn across near the River Nith, and that's right in the heart of the centres that the warlords live in. That is what my wife saw, thought was so funny. That's the Robert Maxwell story. Yeah, Robert Maxwell is a mercenary from that side of the country and the one who's in the uh, Big Brother team yeah, George Galloway is a joke about one of the world's owners out of France and into Galloway and into the elite estates and you can see the river that runs through Langham running under that squeaky new bridge there and the chapel there is, it was built I think it was built between 1845 and it survived right through uh, to World War Two, okay and the Buccleuchs have a huge say in the running of it 
uh, but I just want to take you <laughs> to one of the sections before I get too deeply into it to show you some of their instruments that's the older kirk yeah yeah and all of the flotation of the money it was bitterly cold in that church and what you've got here this is the bit that's most important I would expect the sun to come out any time now because it did when I read this and I highlighted it yesterday look for that light blue <laughs> heavenly skies colour ok so this is about local history in the Langham region and I found it in a PDF and it is really fascinating in this area are to be found evidences of religious worship dating back to the year 1290 BC that's 1300 years before Christ in inverted commas these remain to us in the girdle stones situated in Eskdale Muir in those very early days the inhabitants of the countryside were sun worshippers and it was here at these stone circles that the priests carried out their religious activities that's the pagan priests yeah and all of the uh, I forget what they called them uh, the druids and here too they greeted the rising sun with high festival and great ceremony now today in Sainsbury supermarket they are selling off the horsey shoes with the uh, rubberized sides that my boss at uh, Otago University used to wear all of the time yeah and what you've got there in that one paragraph is a descriptor on how the whole of through all of biological time the human race have worshipped the uh, stellar icons the mountains that they live in the rivers that run through them and all of the beauty that the gods have created on our world yeah and when, <laughs> when I went to Otago University David Jones Dr Jones yeah the one who interlocks with the uh, bridge player in Auckland that is Omar Sharif yeah and runs all of those massive Ponzi schemes and becomes the Dr Jones joke yeah and all of the Notting Hill movie jokes yeah about the Scott family trading all over the world yet yeah, in this massive scam and imposing the false religion so when David Jones the, the uh, springbok because he was a South African yeah he wore uh, those giddy up horsey boots all of the time just to show that he's part of the Piso Hippos horsey team global world owners and his science was really frail and fragile and all of it was entrepreneurial he told us that he had been seven or eight times to see Mount Cook the massive mountain that is the tallest in New Zealand and never had he witnessed the top of the mountain the very f we went twice and we saw it in all of its glory in all of its beauty totally from the very first time we went there I'm going to show you it's halfway up my stairwell and so this is the pagan belief and you've got the concept of animism built into that which is the worship of animals yeah and the ad adoration or the acceptance that the animals that are around you are there to pass on the beauty and the messages from the gods yeah every time we visited Mount Cook <laughs> we saw the whole of its splendour and there is everything else that they have in New Zealand <sighs> so David Jones got pissed on all of the time and none of that surprises me now <laughs> part of the corrupted biochemistry building that has the you know the biggest earning Freemason in New Zealand that's Frank Griffin yeah with the name of the Griffin also from the church roof okay so the physical worship of the sun rising and the moon rising and all of the things that we have done for thousands of years before Christ was invented by the Pisos I but strongly believe in it and it is really inspirational even in this day and age <laughs> right then let's get back to the stories 
because it's complicated yeah and I easily lose my place <laughs> and I want to show you the images of what they get away with so we've got the neck brace for the women that get pregnant to the Duke <laughs> upstairs okay and the Romans came over in Britain in 55 BC but it was not until the years 117 to 138 AD that they reached Scotland and it was then that the Christian faith began slowly to influence the life of the people and then <laughs> they're in the churches and even in the churches the weather is so severe that they almost freeze to death and we get a proclamation yeah and but the real source of Scottish Christianity was the Irish mission on Iona established by St Columba in the year 523 so 500 years later and this was a church independent of both Rome and England listen to the next bit because <laughs> this is local history but it's very very insightful and I believe it entirely because the whole church is a fake up it's run by warlords so listen to this but St Patrick was a native of Strathclyde and he had a greater influence in Dumfrieshire even than St Columba himself. Many of our place names bear this out, such as Kirkpatrick Fleming. Yeah? So the Kirk is false. Patrick is a Scotsman who becomes the patron saint of Ireland and the Flemings from just across the uh, channel are already in the story manipulating every which way up <laughs> okay Kirkpatrick ju Juxta and the Fountain of St Patrick is mentioned in the neighbourhood of Staple Gordon <laughs> right away across at Langham and all of that is influenced by the Kelso clerics because they're the Kelso warlords in the Benedictine Abbey later came St Cuthbert who made a great impression in the Church of Scotland this is well exemplified by the dedication to his memory of the Overkirk of Ewes. So Staplegorton Langham was originally included in the ancient parish of Staplegorton, William de Kunig Kunigburg, who possessed the manor of Staplegorton in the 12th century, granted to the monks of Kelso the church of Staplegorton with all of the lands belonging to it. That is John fucking Stapleton again. Yeah the links of the Stapletons to Longshanks from the deep south of England and actually from the top of Normandy <laughs> and they're ever so quick at the consume, consuming the whole of England okay and that's St. Pat, St. Cuthbert all over the borders they claim his allegiance then he's planted on the holy islands and when they see the worth of his carcass to the tourist economy they take it from the holy islands where he lived yeah in exile because he loved the beautiful sunrises and all of the solitude that he could have there but they took him to county durham and they put him in durham cathedral as a tourist exhibit <laughs> and that's where the mowbrays and the Morries get to carve up the land and that's in the braveheart movie so can you see how complicated it is and what we've got is a leap there from that period and that is 79 AD yeah and that is when the Anna Anichi and the Nerva Antonine missions moved out of the Pisa homeland in Naples and began to head east and west to Constantinople and eventually to Gleski to push St Patrick across the <laughs> Irish Sea and into Irish religion and Irish sectarian violence for the rest of world hi history this is a bit nostalgic for me yeah because what you get with the declaration in that those last two videos I made that the Dukes of Rutland were taken on the junkets in World War two to Palestine I know that the at the place that is the massive lake that is Rutland that they have Christianity jokes <laughs> and my family and my friends the Pearsons have visited that place too yeah and the church on the headland there is just a joke 
let me explain it to you okay so Rutland is the biggest lake in our country by area it's shallower than uh, Kilda so Sha Kilda is bigger by volume and you've got the Norman links the French are all over the Christianity fraud as you now know okay so you've got the Heathcote Baronetcy of London was created in the Baronetage of Great Britain for Gilbert Heathcote, Lord Mayor of London. <laughs> These are the landowners in the Normanton Church region at the massive reservoir that is uh, that is so 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 this is Rutland. The Rainex own the massive reservoir that is Grafham. Okay, and that's the Renex of the Hoyk area, but they are not the posh ones, yeah, they're just the ordinary working men. Okay, so you've got Gilbert Heathcote was Lord Mayor of London in 1711 and one of the founders of the Bank of England. <laughs> yeah, way back when, before the Jacobites were being persecuted by the Duke of Cumbria, yeah from the Carlisle and Langham region right across where all of those legendary Scottish revolutionaries are alleged to be okay <laughs> it is really really complicated and no surprise little Sheriff Kev Drummond has relatives on the take <laughs> okay uh, and here we've got links to Bodmin and the West Country uh, and Shaftesbury and the Shaftesbury rules and Rutland yeah and they openly declare that the Rutland people get to visit Palestine in the junkets with the Dukes of Norfolk and all of the care women and all of the Duchesses of Roxburgh and all of the Rothschilds that they were before they became provincial players <laughs> okay it's huge and the wealth divide is absolutely consistent with all of world history that's why the colonists get replaced by the sheep <laughs> okay and you've got the third baronets from this Rutland movement yeah with the original Norman links to Christianity and now the church on the headland is actually no longer used as a church it's just a joke and it's used now for civil marriages for a laugh <laughs> let me show you my wife will recognize it Hugh Pearson will recognize it I love the place just because I was besotted with the fishing Normanton Church and when I fished on the headland here I got chucked off by the people that were in charge of it <laughs> okay and we've got the Norman Road all the way along uh, and so that's a map of Coutances in Normandy and it takes you all the way into the Norman church in Rutland yeah quite close to Leicester and this is the jokes that then ensue from it there's the church it's built on a stone headland like kind of like a huge joke yeah and the whole of that river valley has been buried to presumably to cover up the shame on the linkage to the Lord Mayor of London and the massive financial scams that that man engages in as one of the early leaders of the Bank of England around about the same time as the French Jacobites are trying to flee, free Scotland from them and all of it is just a cull all of them who can speak French, Latin, Greek understand that all of the world leaders work together to get rid of the ordinary poor people <laughs> right then and there's Rutland it's a wonderful fishery the trout in it are massive or they were when I was young let me show you the jokes so you've learned that the Heathcote man becomes the boss at the Bank of England he becomes the Lord Mayor of London and in popular culture he has to be covered up even although we're way back in Jacobite times so how do they cover him up? that way <laughs> okay so that is Hector Heathcote okay and that is the Piso 
Pie 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 Pipe in his mouth, which is Harold Wilson's Pie 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 Pipe in the Garden of Eden Eden jokes. And what you've got there is the American Revolution and the culling of the indigenous pagans hanging as three feathers off the bottom of his Pie 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 Piso Pipe. OK, everything is covered up in popular culture. OK, and that's the killing of the 500 nations after the Spanish had already made huge incursions onto the west coast of America. Yeah, and the cowboys come along with their hats and their cavalries and the rest is the brutal history of the world. And the horse leaves American on the wrong side of the English plantation because remember that America all belongs still to the crown and at 5.30 this evening which is was seven minutes ago according to my watch the Queen becomes the longest reigning monarch in the history of Great Britain yeah? she's not doing a thing to help her citizens yeah? and the Episcopalian woman that said to me yeah, she makes a fortune for our country George is just a bimbo but I should not say that because she's very kind to me and she actually sp talks to me sometimes quite deeply unlike any of the other people in our town yeah and the clerics at that church understand my power and the deep insight that I have and thank you to both of them for talking to me the churches all around are in a manpower crisis yeah because of illness issues and defections the old parish church has had two since I came back from New Zealand <laughs> uh, and so so this guy was educated yeah you kind of know the story already don't you Christ's College Cambridge where Ali G went and all of those fraudsters including Hurst in the football team all of the people that are part of, and that is the Wilson, Betty and Keppel religious jokes about Egypt and all of the sand dancers that Britain have hanging from their puppet strings all around the world and the Pie Pie Pipers lead them into battle everywhere that's Alistair Hutton's role ok so he was one of the promoters of the new East India Company and he emerged victorious so this is scams in the stock market from a contest between himself and the old East India Company in 1693 this is the Lord Mayor of London the Heathcote man and the Gilbert bit has got the Bertie joke in it and the Gil is the Rollins Gil joke which I have not quite sussed yet but everywhere you go the Gil joke and the shark coming out of the church roof yeah, and the Rollins Gill being the place of residence for tiny Rollins when he asset stripped the whole of Newcastle ok so he emerged victoria f victorious from a contest between himself and the old East India Company in 1693 he was also one of the first directors of the Bank of England and served as its governor from 1709 to 1711 and a second term up to 1725 Sheriff for London as well then elected Lord Mayor of London so he's in charge of all of the vital sectors <laughs> yeah, and the issuance of money to the elites already from 1709 he was its governor that's 106 years before Waterloo when the Rothschilds took it over entirely so this is the Rutland connection and I think that the bottom tab is empty ok it is right so I'm going to take you to Langham and show you some of the pictures I think that this is so there's the Montague bloodlines and let me show you the vicious pictures so in the areas on the west side at the top of the Teviot Valley 
where the clues were prevalent. Yet yeah, you've got the Armstrong and the Langham legends. So there's Armstrong that went to the moon. Gary Armstrong is a Scottish rugby international, a great player in his day. Yeah, all of the links to the Armstrongs that fought against the local landowners who became the Buccleus and the Scots and all of the rest of the story you've just heard. And there is the fabulous River Esk running through Langham. Yeah, used to be a great sea trout fishery. Yeah, the next generation on, they do not recognise that there were huge migrations of sea trout and eels into that river. They think it's now a conspiracy theory. Humans have done for all of that and all of their agrarian greed and all of the chemicals and ivermectins that they use as biocides in the farms. Yeah, totally unjustified. The whole of that is a marketing ploy that has despoiled the whole of our beautiful natural wilderness. Yeah, and that's why the gods get so angry at the damning projects and the uh, all of those hydro schemes that we've told you about in FDR's regime in America. Yeah, and there's somebody in an open carriage, I don't know who he is. And what I'm going to do now is try and take you back. No, I think we need to go forward then. Yeah, this is what we want to see. So when you get into the Langham story and the Buccleus with the private churches at the head of this valley, yet they live in a lodge at the top of the valley, and I'm going to show you <laughs> how many thickening estates they've got. But this is a thing called a Branks. And if we go to that Langham history, let's find the Langham history. So there it is. It's a little mask. And you get to wear it. And that gives you a little clue about which gender gets to wear it. <laughs> and it's called a Scots Bride. Or a Scold's Bride. Yeah? That's the husband. You know, remember that this is a very contentious area for gender politics. So at the high common riding, the women were not allowed to participate, they were not allowed to go to the mountain tops, yeah, and share the joke about mountains to mole hills and the chief marshal for the area. And it's all based on the laws of succession in Hanover, where blind Prince George's relatives came from and they sired Queen Victoria's only legitimate child. Yeah, when she was fourteen, uh, when she was twelve, and blind Prince George of Cumbria and Teviotdale was twelve, uh, fourteen rather. Okay, and that makes Queen Victoria a legitimate royal, and all of her life in marriage to Albert was bigamous. So this is a vicious instrument. Yeah, you've heard of the chastity belt, but if the husband does not approve of the wife's behaviours he gets to put this thing on her head and it's got a massive uh, spiky thing that comes right up into where your tongue wags around and if you wag your tongue around inside it it gets cut off <laughs> yeah and that becomes Branksome yeah the place names all around that river valley so the Duchess has the chastity thing which is the neck brace on every church and the Duchess and the Duke have a private church on their massive estate at Merton. <laughs> yeah, and all over those estates for the Bow Hills. Uh, and the, sorry, the for the uh, Buccleus. So do you see that the gifting by the Benedictines of vast tracts of land in the early days of the church are <laughs> massive gestures. Uh, and in the end, when King Henry, King Henry begins to flatten the cathedrals, then the uh, Marquis of the Cares and the local landowners begin to take all of the land back from the warlords that were the church owners. And as you've seen in the earlier episodes, the church owners actually become the bishops immediately after 1066. And that's the Murrays becoming the uh, the bishopric uh, in that region and that is the same Murrays that came out of the Morovingian dynasty just a generation before out of France and out of the Flemish north country in Belgium 
and the Dunkirk region and the road to ruin region <laughs> yeah and all of it we're not allowed to smack our children now so here's this map that it kind of explains it okay and what we've got here is a google map of so I could not find the place that they had carved up and gifted to Kelso Abbey because it was supposed to be staple let's see if I can find that staple uh, clan Kelso link it was staple Mowbray's gifted a chunk of Scott staple Gurton. Okay, I could not find that. So what you do is to look for derivatives of staple, and what you find is that there is a Stapleton, and that's John Stapleton in popular culture in the BBC News, working as the correspondent in New York. <laughs> yeah, and the Stapletons interlock to Longshanks like all of these elite families do yeah there's the George Galloway name yeah and the Galloways are way across here on the west coast and I've shown you the Halo Trust because that is the place uh, where they actually make a massive charitable fraud out of their pretense that they lift the landmines that the Breden camps have been laying in Africa for two or three decades already yeah, that's the Republic of South Africa. And what you've got across here, let's go a little bit closer up. So, a brief history. So there's where they were gifted <laughs> the land to Kelso Abbey. And you can see that the River Tweed runs there. The River Tweed runs there. The River Teviot runs here. And it get right up into this region. And the Teviot splits away. Uh, and you've got the tributaries that then begin to run west into the Langham and into the west coast region okay Stapleton is way across there you can see what a massive gift that was <laughs> okay and across all the way across the Buccleus have vast tracts of land all the way across the Scots have vast tracts of land up here you get Dalkeith up here you're on the Lothian coast and you've got the massive places that are the estates that then become the golf clubs that host the Open Championships and those estates are called Haddington and, and all across it the whole of the family base that we've just seen and the authors that plagiarised that Robin Hood story <laughs> every bit of it is owned by them and here we've got Rabbi Burns country and the New World Order authors Yeah, and the Halo Trust is right across here uh, and the Bowhill Estate is one of these little tabs here in Selkirk, where Kev Drummond runs the court. Yeah, David Steele runs the cabal, runs the frauds in energy supply, runs the NHS frauds from his garage, <laughs> runs the whole of the Scottish democracy there. Yeah, as a fraud, and all of the re revised costs for building the Parliament building go ten times over budget and there's where St. Patrick lived <laughs> yeah. and down here you've got all the Buccleuse estates and across in the Gerrard region you've got the Marquis of Lothian that's Michael Ancrum director at Conservative Clubs UK Tory, Tory uh, party leader for a long long time and his constituency is a way down in the south where the English armies are led to their death yeah that's in the the road along to Bree and Port and Down Aldershot was the name of his constituency okay so there's the staple place that was gifted yeah it's actually Stapleton now it's not got that historic label and up here you've got the Mullock Tyre and that is R.E.F. Macrahinish where the US Navy SEALs brought down the Chinook that was designed to 
make the people uh, that was carrying 29 people all of them experts in policing and in the military that were capable of ending the Irish Troubles and that was sung about by uh, McCartney et al 10 years they made 10 years before the incident they made the song about the uh, Mull of Kintyre and the crashing of that helicopter it's really really sick okay so <laughs> are you getting the picture uh, and the history of the church and how the church gets funded and how the church is frozen until they can afford to put gas in yeah and all of it <laughs> they begin to release debentures and the likes and folk like the Armstrongs are savvy enough to uh, buy the buy the right to worship but they sell it on to people that want to buy their souls yeah <laughs> and it is really really sickly the, about the only inspiring thing in the whole of the saga was learning about the pagans and for how long the pagans worshipped the beautiful mountains and the beautiful regions before those ghastly churches and all of the massive <laughs> Babylonian structures were imposed on it and that will be Holy Island I believe yeah, where St Cuthbert he was buried there and he was disinterned against his will and placed in the uh, massive cathedral in County Durham which is totally untouched yet yeah, only the Scottish abbeys get flattened and Walter Scott the author goodness knows how many of those Walter Scots might have been authors yeah but the whole thing is a really confusing obfuscation tool which is why Oswald Mosley runs Burke Peerage Oswald Mosley's family that's the world's the world's leading fascist family yeah that were the heads of the Conservative Party and were the bosses for the man Joyce who became Lord Haw Haw Hitler's propagandist their family run the Burke's Peerage and it's not surprising at all when you see what the Aristos want to do to the people of the world all of the time they want to do it to them and that leads to shallow graves in everybody else's countries <laughs> yeah. and all of the religions now are busted for cash it's absolutely tragic yeah. and all that needs to happen is that the central banks that issue everybody's funding are taken back into democratic hands but there's no point in doing it when folk like <laughs> George Galloway David Cameron and all of those quizlings that just do what they're told to steal from the world and all of their citizens yeah it's pathetic we've gotten off the religious story so uh, the Langham story is really interesting and all of the estates let me just show you that uh, show you that family tree because I've not looked at that a lot uh, so we've seen the Branks image we've seen the images of the Armstrongs oh and the other places up here are really interesting because that is where Mary Queen of Scots lovers were that's the place called Hermitage Castle you can see it there so that was one of the people that was tied into Mary Queen of Scots in Holyrood yeah and that's in the mountains above Langham uh, and you've got all the way across there I'm just going to open it up and show you because the Vesties are up there they've got huge tracts of su su Sutherland uh, the Sutherlands <laughs> are across in the borders and in the video I made this morning the links to the Montefiores are through the Sutherlands yeah that's at Merton Estate not Merton College the richest college in Oxford but Merton Estate on the River Tweed okay that's the Duchess of Sutherland yeah who's actually they've got huge holdings 
up in the north too and what you've got, let me just profile this whole terrain here it's an epicentre for fascism and the landowners that own the whole world for all of world history <laughs> ok Aww. so there's let's see if I can put that back on So there's Kelso. Okay, there. There is the Tweed Valley. Yeah, and the TV Valley. So there's Melrose on the Tweed Valley. And the interlocks between the Montefiores, who are actually in the Rothschild family. Yeah. Uh, and they, they interlock to the Duchess of Sutherland. Uh, and that takes you into the National Gallery in Scotland and that was the interlock that I could not find in the video I made this morning you've got the clue owned estates and houses all over the land so there's Bowhill at Selkirk yeah that is uninhabited I believe it's just a tourist venue there you've got the Peebles region where the Tweeds Muirs are the landowners they become the governor generals of uh, of Canada. There you've got the Earl of Dalkeith. Here you've got the Haddington region. Here you've got the Queen's Ferry region, which is the Almond Valley and all of the Balfour holdings, the House of Shaws, and all of the jokes about uh, the Roseberries having massive mansions. That is the Roseberries that were the first Gentiles to marry into the Rothschild. Okay, that's up here at Queensferry. <laughs> yeah, this is the Lothian coast where McHale went missing. There's Haddington, there's uh, Lauder where the Duke of Northumberland has his shooting lodge, yeah, with all of the blackbirds coming out of the pie, and that's the Duke of Northumberland that is Percy, aka Perseus in the Roman court. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, there's Michael Moore's Gala Shields, there's where the Melrose School is, where Lord Sanderson of Bowden uh, interlocks with uh, all of those power brokers <laughs> that include uh, the Beards and the Jeffreys, yeah, that were the Scottish rugby playing heroes. Yeah, and there's Jedburgh. <laughs> okay, right at the top of the Teviot Valley and Michael Ancrum is up here <laughs> on the way across the Carter Bar the Vesties are in this little corner here yeah and all of the land that was at the head of Teviotdale yeah up above Jedburgh yeah that was Blind Prince George of Cumbria's and Teviotdale's all of that when they were disgraced because Prince Albert was defamed as a German yeah Prince Albert led his life in persecution too, like Queen Victoria. Yeah, and the first people to move in as soon as the Hanoverians were evicted after World War I can't remember whether it was World War One or World War Two. Yeah, they were close friends of Bismarck. They gave Buckingham Palace to the British Windsors and then they get booted out on their ear. And guess who moves in as soon as they are displaced? The Dukes of Buccleuch all over now yeah all over it <laughs> and there's Falkirk and the stories about the justice minister and there is the fault line yeah through the Queen's Ferry region along the Antonine Wall and that is the Antonine Nerva Christianity dynasty and the pagans are dead in the ditch and the Gales are dead in the ditch and all of the jokes about the uh, the uh, Picts painting their faces blue in the Braveheart movie that's thousands of years too late <laughs> or hundreds anyway yeah and all of the false news is written by the New World Order authors and it is a huge tragedy and it takes you right into the modern day and age and they would do everything they can 
to keep the Irish violence going were they given the opportunity but now that they've got an analyst like me coming at them with everything that they do to the people they're in a really dangerous place and that's the view from Arthur's seat the Arthurian joke again yeah that's where the uh, one o'clock gun that's Mons Meg yeah <laughs> the the uh, joke about the cannon that keeps the world at bay yeah every day at one o'clock that cannon goes off overlooking Edinburgh and there's the Glaswegian crime scene and all of that is very close to the Paisley Abbey where Christianity was launched yeah and let me just read you before we stop what the Branx story was in that so I think I've shown you all the pictures now but I could show you again <laughs> that this bit I've only just opened yeah and it's ever so complex yeah so that's the Douglas links and here we've got Mary Queen of Scots and Darnley uh, and that is the Anna Denmark connections Mary of Medici Charles the first Charles the second religious strife right through that yeah the beheadings of the monarchs here's the haze that keep the register of the clans and their contenders Walter first Lord Scott of Buccleuch Sir William Kerr and her daughter m sorry Mary was the daughter of Sir William Kerr all of it interbred and interlocked <laughs> Walter first Earl of Buccleuch died 1633 Mary Hay 9th Earl of 9th Earl of Errol presumably why Errol Flynn the actor chose the name Errol Flynn because he was the hero from Northampton where the Buccleuchs have quite a secret mansion I've not heard about that one until today <laughs> yeah Rothes Glen Rothes yeah right in the heart of Scotland uh, Anne Scott, James, Duke of Monmouth and Buccleuch uh, and Monmouth I think is in the West Country but I'm not sure Henrietta Hyde, daughter of the first Earl of Rochester Earl of Dalkeith, they're all over the country Caroline Campbell, eldest daughter and co heiress Duke of Argyll and Greenwich that's Argyll that was in the Braveheart movie played by Brian Cox who's the only person in the stardom in Scotland that I cannot find on the business register he trained yeah, the young Braveheart to speak Latin <laughs> sent him off to Italy and France to become a sophisticate so he could join in the slaughter and the carnage yeah, and that's Greenwich where I did my PhD and Baroness Blackstone works she scams everything that she touches yeah and Greenwich is now the intel hub like Woolwich and Wimbledon fourth Duke of Queensbury that's the Douglas lineage that I talked about earlier in the week <laughs> all of the men in this case and then we've got the Montagues Sarah Montague reads the news for uh, the Radio 4 team all of them are liars and cheats everything that the country gets scammed of they lie about it that's Jim Nocte the Scottish Quisling who's writing a book about Queen Elizabeth's massively long and influential reign he does not have the courage to publish it because <laughs> he knows the gods are watching everything he does now <laughs> Sir Edward Montague of Bramwell and Hemington Bot Bottom 1528 no idea where that is Earls and Dukes of Manchester Henry Sydney Earls of Sandwich right down in rural Kent everywhere we go there's a golf course there and it's a championship golf course that is capable of hosting the global tournaments <laughs> Francis Cotton of Bottom Bottom again First Duke of Montagu Rothsley Earl of Southampton bottom of the Avon River almost every river valley in the country they've consumed now John 2nd Duke of Montague 1st Duke of Marlborough that is I believe one of Churchill's places 
Mary Montague, George Brudenell, fourth Earl of Cardigan, Wales, and we've got a Montherma, Marquis of Montherma. Duke of Buccleuch, 5th Duke of Queensbury uh, and we've got a whole host of them at the bottom there Charles IV, Duke of Buccleuch, 6th Duke of Queensbury 1st Viscount Sydney <laughs> Court down, Queensbury, Marquis of Lothian yeah, the cares, all of the intermarriages and all of the names are so confusing William VI, Duke of Queensbury again, four other children. First, Lord Montague of Bewley, uh, Earl of Bradford, <laughs> Duke of Queensbury, La Salle, Sir George Hawkins, Earl of Home, daughter of the Earl of Home, into John Lamont's Coldstream. Yeah, HRH the Duke of Gloucester yeah I believe that the Gloucesters and the estates there are where Princess Anne now resides Sir Peter Donny yeah the man on the on the uh, Big Ben clock face in the story about the 39 steps written by the Tweedsmuirs from Peebles that is the Buckins yeah they become the Governor General in Canada and all of them are sad profiteering bastards Lieutenant Colonel Harry Bishop with the word Pizel in it <laughs> Ninth Duke of Buccleuch, 11th Duke of uh, and John McNeil of Colonsey, the Outer Isles now 10th Duke of Northumberland yeah, that's the Percys Elizabeth Caroline, Lord Gilmore of Craig Miller quite close to the outskirts of Edinburgh where uh, the uh, place was that they partitioned uh, India and Pakistan Linlithgow Craig Miller Castle yeah 10th uh, Duke of Buccleuch 12th Duke of Queensbury Elizabeth Kerr daughter of the 12th Marquis of Lothian Charlotte Anne Boniface Rose Pierre looks as if we've got a little French subsidiary in 1966 ok it is so complicated uh, but let me just find a bit about the Branxes and all the scams in the kirk and how they were freezing to death in those churches because the doors when they were open the snow and the wind would just blow in yet they had no anti-chambers and the gods yet because they've been replaced by the iconic messiah yet they get ballistic and we're just a few generations from that sun worshipping period yeah and it's now a total fraud the missions are everywhere there are dozens and dozens hundreds if you go to the philippines of christian subsidiaries which are denominations okay <laughs> right then i think i'm gonna stop uh, and i do not know why I do not have any insight at all into which one of those was the Walter Scott that plagiarised that pathetic book <laughs> and all of the books are pathetic I've read some of them just out of loyalty as a border Scott when you're a youngster you think it's an obligation to do that <laughs> okay so let's see if we can sicken you with it I was going to read you again the bit about the uh, the neck brace and the tongue brace uh, so do you see the linkage to the French and the Murrays and the warlords that come all over Scotland yeah because that's what Iona is Iona did that yeah and they run the church as warlords all across Europe and the Patrick joke is the patrician joke out of Rome they are the elites in Rome the ordinary people yeah, that get nothing at all yeah, but to be the gladiators and the slaves so 
Yet they're the gladiators and the slaves, and that is the plebgate joke shared by those sad bastards in Westminster just a few couple of years ago with the police fighting with the man who's in the cabinet and stealing all of the money from the sub-Saharan and Middle East funds and the development funds forget what his name is yeah falling out with the policeman at the gate and the police have the word piso in it and there is no law enforcement anywhere Bye-bye.